Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. I want to talk about abuse. I am an abuse survivor. My son, Alex, is, abuse, is an abuse survivor. And what's really heartbreaking about this is that we both trusted people that were supposed to protect us. My abuse started early when I was a little girl. My mother horribly, horribly abused me. She physically beat me and left welts, bleeding welts on my body. She verbally abused me, calling me horrific, horrific names like Ryan's with socks, sucker. And she said, F you, F you to me when I was just like a little girl. And she said, you're stupid. No one wants to be friends with you. Imagine saying this to your child. And then when I grew up and needed psychological help, I was sexually you know, abused by my psychologist. Um, and my son, because he, he almost died from pneumococcal meningitis, that was before the vaccine came out, so he couldn't be protected from it. He, um, he suffered severe extensive brain damage throughout his whole, I mean, he's just, his whole brains are eroded, completely eroded. And he's on like, you know, all these drugs um, to suppress, because when you have brain damage, you have um, aggression. It, it's like, uh, it's not like conscious aggression because it's like neurons are shooting off in your brain and, and you impulsively, um, he, he could kill, he could kill me. I mean, it wouldn't be his fault because he has, he's, he's severely, his brain is severely damaged from the disease. So that's why he needs 24 hour, you know, 24 seven hour care. But in these institutions, I don't like them. You know, um, he's doped up on all sorts of high psych, um, psychotic medication um, to, to suppress, um, you know, to suppress him from acting out and, and doing harm. And But harm was done to him. He was severely beaten with bruises all over his body, a big black eye from people who, staff people who are trained to deal with severely handicapped people. He was sexually molested in another institute. I argued with my husband for us to bring him home so he wouldn't have to, um, you know, go through that anymore while we're looking for you know, yet another place. We had to keep changing places because all these institutes, they're just horrible. They really are. They're really horrible. and. And I wanted to bring him home to live, but my husband said there's no way that we could take care of him. And I knew my husband was right, you know. Um, he's like, he's almost six foot three, you know, he's 27 year old male, and with brain damage, um, like he's out of his mind. That's the only way I can um, describe it. Someone that's out of their mind or because of an illness. Um, not something that they're consciously aware of, like a conscious person, um, because he's on heavy, heavy, heavy medication. And, you know, we wouldn't be able to control him. He could, even my other son said, you know, what if, what if he broke a window or, you know, and then, you know, the neighbors called the police on him. Um, you know, what if something like that happened? Um, would he be in jail? Yeah, you know, we just didn't have the capacity because we didn't have, like, we're, you know, we're old people, we're senior citizens, me and my husband. Um, and we just couldn't do it. But I just felt so horrible leaving him, you know, in these, in these places. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm trying to get the word out here that, you know, people have to be more aware of um, that these places... And these people who work in these places, you know, like psychologists,
cannot be trusted. Now, a psychologist is a different, um, a different species because, you know, you don't have to go to a psychologist, you know. Um, that's a choice. You're putting your trust in someone's hands that you think is going to help you to get better. And then they abuse you. And this has happened to me repeatedly. And this is why I want, I have to get the word out. It's not okay. And it needs to be addressed. This really needs to be addressed. Because um, I've stopped going out completely. I will never, ever go to therapy again. I mean, I have that choice. My son doesn't have that choice, you know, to go to these institutes. We are his legal guardian. We are his legal guardians because, you know, he cannot, he's an invalid. He cannot function because meningitis took his mind away. It, it just like ate, ate at, at his mind. Um, and he just, you know, he, he is an invalid. He can't go to the bathroom or wash himself by himself. He can't read. He can't write. Uh, he talks like a two-year-old. He watches Sesame Street. At, he's 27, you know. Um, so what I'm trying to say is he doesn't have a choice. He needs to, like an old person, an elderly person in a nursing home. They really don't have a choice. If they can't take care of themselves and no one will take care of them because other people, you know, can't be around the clock, even if they have children, you know, what adult child can be around the clock to take care of their parents? That's why a lot of um, people put their parents in nursing homes because, you know, they don't, they're not like an established institute that have nurses and doctors and workers, you know, and uh, nurses aides around the clock, you know, and they can't give up their whole life to, you know, to take care of their parent. Um, and uh, what I'm trying to say is sometimes we do have a choice and we can speak out, um, and I think that's very important for um, someone who's been severely abused as a child and as an adult by people um, who have, who I've put trust in and people who, you know, I put my son's trust in too that have badly abused my son. And it's just, um, we always have choices. Of course, you know, um, he was kicked out of one place to whitewash it all. Because, you know, they don't want a parent talking to other people, telling other parents what a staff member did, right? So what do they do? They kick him out so that, to whitewash the whole thing. But I'm on here now, and even though I can't mention names of those institutes because I signed legal documentation, I have not signed legal documentation with psychologist except for Dr. James Barberry but he's dead <laughs> he died otherwise I could never come on here and say his name but I want to get it across that you know when you take action you no longer feel like a victim at least that's how I feel I feel empowered trying to get this message across to people I feel empowered because I am saying I will not lay down and take it anymore I won't take it for myself, and I won't take it for my son. I am here as, a, um, as an advocate to those people who've been brutally, brutally, um, horrifically um, abused, either you know, sexually, verbally, emotionally, physically. I mean, I run the gambit. Me and, me and Alex, my son Alex, Al, I call him Alley Cat. I call him Alley Cat. <laughs> we have run the gambit of abuse. I am tired now. I'm almost 60 now. I'm going to be 60 very soon. We are tired of it. I'm at the point where no more. No more. I'm coming on here. And I'm going to, you know, say that it's not okay that we have to make change the laws. We have to change the laws so innocent people are not abused. Um, a mother, did, one of the parents did change the law um, for children in these institutes that now if you were, have just been, um, if someone accused you of 
physically abusing a physical abuse even if it even if it was dismissed just the accusation alone um they have to put that on record that that is part of your record even if it was dismissed so and then companies if they see that they're not going to hire someone who is accused of abusing like that hor horrific evil monster who beat my son that'll be on his record now and he will never get a job with children handicapped elderly he'll probably get a job at walmart <laughs> right make him less than win minimum wage or something so and with psychologists is licensing board but we still have to change the laws on that we still have to make it a crime Sex with a patient is statutory rape. It isn't considered statutory rape um, only in 26 states. The rest of the states, it isn't. And we have to change that law. We also have to change the law of psychologists like Dr. Richard Guy said support other psychologists that sexually abuse their patients. We have to change that to hold them accountable because they held accountable the people who knew the people who knew my son was beaten by that vicious monster and said nothing, they got fired because they were held accountable because they knew something and didn't say anything. If you know something and don't speak up and say anything, you're just as guilty. You're just as guilty as the person doing it because you're not doing anything about it. That means you support it, you know? So that's why I went to the licensing board against um, Dr. Richard Geist, and I'm hoping that I'm praying really hard that they come down hard on him because he encouraged this um, unethical relationship. He supported it. He tried to shame me into keeping quiet and not reporting Jim. He tried to shame me. Both of them did. Both of them. The psychologist who sexually abused me, who had sex with me for two years, and Dr. Richard Geist tried to shame me that I couldn't speak up. Well, guess what? Here I am. Here I am speaking up to the world. Not only did I go to the licensing board and speak up and, you know, make an, a, a, for, a formal complaint, but here I am now. Nobody silences this girl. Nobody. Nobody. I'm speaking up now. As an abuse survivor, and my son as an abuse survivor, and saying we will no longer keep quiet about you people, all right? We will no longer protect you. I will no longer be shamed for the abuse that others did that were trust uh, that I trusted in their care. I will no longer be shamed into that. That is wrong. And it should have never, ever happened. And I will no longer be shamed. So I'm here now. And I will keep speaking up. And I will keep writing my books. Um, and talking about this horrific stuff. And I'm going to bring it all out of the closet. I'm going to bring all this stuff out forth. Because I want people to know that this is not alright. This, this will not be tolerated. And we will take action and that's what empowers me take sitting back and doing nothing doesn't make me feel good taking action is what empowers me standing up for what's right naming names when i can you know um because you know the person that did these things to my son that sexually and, and physically abused them they got fired so they're no longer with my son but and Jim Barbaria is dead so he's no longer hurting other patients but Dr. Richard Geist is still out there so we need to put him away we need to put those people away that are hurting other people because it's not okay for them to be out there it's not okay for them to be practicing when they severely traumatize and abuse a patient okay that's not okay so we need that we need to get those people out 
away from people they can hurt. And this is the whole point of this video. We need to change the laws and we need to um, stop being shamed and stop, and stop, you know, being quiet. We need to speak out. We need to scream. We need to get the word out, right? Not be afraid. So I hope that this has helped people who have been abused themselves, who are abuse survivors themselves. Um, speak out. Speak out. Don't keep it quiet. Don't let them shame you into keeping it quiet. You need to speak out. You need to get your message across. You need to make sure that whoever abused you is behind bars or their license is taken away or they can never work with other people or be around those people again with whom they abused or anyone else that they could possibly abuse in the future. Okay, get the word out. Don't keep quiet. That's my message today. Don't keep quiet. Don't be shamed. Don't be the victim, okay? Be the advocate. Be an advocate. Get the word out. <laughs>